Hi, this is Julia, and here is Aze News for you. Activists want Indonesia's new capital to prioritize wildlife. The Indonesian government has promised to protect wildlife and reforest large parts of the project, which has been marketed to investors as a smart green city of the future, fully powered by renewable energy. But environmentalists are concerned the construction spanning nearly 260,000 hectares or 642,800 474 acres will affect some of Borneo's endemic fauna, including endangered ones like the long nosed monkey, Irrawaddy dolphins, orangutans, and the vulnerable Bornean sun bear. Basically, uh, in the design of uh, building uh, the road, uh, the concern about the animal, the concern about the wildlife uh, is there. But uh, control, uh, everyday control, need to be uh, carried out, and then we will do so, uh, including also uh, to discuss about the design of the of the wildlife corridor that uh, could be uh, cross uh, the 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 toll road. In my opinion, the green city that will become the capital will be placed in an industrial plantation forest area, so they are not clearing new land. It is hoped that by not clearing new land, it will prevent conflicts with animals, for example, other animals besides orangutans too. Maybe there are bears, birds, and all kinds of animals. Mapasele fears more could be raised to build a new toll road connecting Nusantara to nearest city of Balikpapan and a port from where construction materials from the city would be brought in. The Nusantara Capital City Authority says mangroves would be replanted in other areas and guidelines have been drawn up for workers who may come in contact with wildlife. Nusantara will be declared the new capital in the first half of 2024. Key government buildings, including a palace and a presidential palace office, must be ready by August next year. Garbage cleaning boat fight pollution in Bali's waters. A boat designed to collect ocean waste took to the water for the first time off the shore of Indonesia's Bali Island, marking the beginning of its mission to combat marine plastic pollution. Frenchman Yvan Bonnion and his team has been working on the Mobula 8 since 2016, a year after he returned from his solo sailing world tour when he failed to take action after witnessing the extent of the ocean plastic waste problem. And uh, with this kind of boat, we can collect up to 1,000 tons of plastic every year, which is very good. Uh, so we hope to, it will be the first boat, but uh, we hope to have a few ones coming because we need more in Bali, we need more in Indonesia. And I'm sure this Mobula 8 in Bali will be the best example uh, to show to all these uh, countries uh, how much we need to do something for the sea. Plastic pollution is particularly acute in Indonesia, an archipelago nation that ranks second only behind China for its volume of plastics that end up in the seas. Bali's iconic beaches were littered with trash during the peak of the monsoon season as heavy winds and rain washed up pollution from its neighboring Java Island. Thailand will hold general election on May 14, 2023. The national poll body said a day after parliament was dissolved that Thailand will be held elections on May 14. Election Commission Secretary General Sawai Bonme at a news conference said early voting will take place on May 7, while candidate registration, including for party nominees for prime minister, will take place in early April. Thailand will hold a general election on the 14th of May 2023. Early voting will take place on the 7th of May 2023. Huta is expected to hold events daily across Thailand, featuring the daughter of former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra, Pai Tong Tang, who has topped opinion polls as a potential candidate for Premier. Thai police in a standoff after shooting leaves to death. According to police, Thailand police were locked in a standoff with an armed civilian after he had killed at least two people when firing a gun from inside his home. 
Authorities have caught on top of the residential area in Pechaburi province, two hours west of Bangkok, and a dozen heavily armed police officers swarm in response to the incident, which began at about 1.30 p.m. local time. The situation was not under control yet, Pechaburi police superintendent Wan Chai Kaoram told Reuters over the phone, adding that one injured person had been taken to a nearby hospital. According to Kaoram, the suspect was a 29-year-old man who appeared to be stressed because he was due to appear in court over a dispute with his neighbor. China says military base agreement between Philippines and United States should not harm their party. China's foreign minister said defense and security cooperation between countries should not target or harm the interests of third parties in response to the agreement on the new military base deployed by the United States in the Philippines. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said that four new military bases under the defense agreement with the U.S. would be located in various parts of the Philippines, including in a province facing the South China Sea. Last month, Marcos granted the U.S. access to four sites on top of five existing locations under the 2014 Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, which comes amid China's growing assertiveness in the South China Sea and towards Taiwan. Ministry spokesperson Wong said he hoped the two countries will comprehensively discuss and implement the important consensus, including properly handle maritime disputes. Blinken said China watching the international response to war in Ukraine. Each member of the subcommittee will have seven minutes. United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken told lawmakers that China was very carefully watching how Washington and the world respond to the Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the impact of which he said was being felt in Asia. Uh, and to some extent. Speaking on the heels of visit to Moscow by Chinese President Xi Jinping, Blinken said if Russia was allowed to attack its neighbor with impunity, it will open a Pandora's box for would-be aggressors and lead to a world of conflict. The stakes in Ukraine go well beyond Ukraine. And to your point, I think it, um, it has a profound impact in Asia, uh, for example. Everyone is watching to see how we and the world responds to this aggression, and they'll draw their lessons from it. One of the reasons that there are so many um, partners involved in this from Asia is precisely because, even though this is happening half a world away, they see the stakes for them. One of the leading countries in our coalition to support Ukraine is Japan. South Korea is playing an important role. Australia is too, uh, and they see the stakes. I think if China is looking at this, and they are looking at it very carefully, they will draw lessons for how the world comes together or doesn't to stand up to this aggression. Russia's invasion has led to debates over how the war will affect China's military thinking regarding Taiwan, the self-governing island that Beijing sees as sovereign Chinese territory. Xi and Russian President Vladimir Putin greeted one another as dear friend when they met in the Kremlin and discussed China's proposals for a resolution to the Ukraine conflict. Blinken said China's political and material support for Russia goes against Washington's interest, but added that Washington had not yet seen evidence that Beijing is providing Moscow with little aid for the conflict. China and Brazil seek to create a green investment fund. A senior Brazilian official told Reuters Brazil and China are in talks to create funds for financing the development of green industry and renewable energy in both countries. Brazilian Environment Minister Marina Silva said the new fund under discussion would be used to recover forests and develop a more sustainable economy, including the production of green hydrogen. The proposal could be announced during President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva's visit to Beijing, although a government official said there were still some details to work out. Silva said, however, that China will not join the billion-dollar Amazon fund, started by Norway to finance sustainable development and protect the world's largest tropical rainforest, which Spain, France and Britain are looking at joining. Brazil already received a commitment from the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden on climate policy and forest protection when Lula visited the White House last month. United States and South Korea militaries hold air bombing drills. The South Korean Air Force said United States and South Korean militaries conducted air drills as part of a joint field training exercise called Warrior Shield. In video footage provided by South Korea's military, fighter jets including F-15KS, F-35AS and KF-16s were seen dropping various types of missiles and bombs which hit targets that exploded. 
South Korea's Air Force said the five days of air-to-air -air life firing and air-to-surface bombing drills with the U.S. 51st Fighter Wing of 7th Air Force and involved various South Korean fighter jets along with the U.S. A-10 attack aircraft to check precision strike capabilities of the Joint Air Force. On last Friday, North Korea's state media said the country had tested a new nuclear-capable underwater attack drone as the leader Kim Jong-un warned South Korea and the U.S. to stop their reckless anti-North Korea war drills. Military experts concerned by North Korea's nuclear weapons claims. Military experts say North Korea's latest claims that it has tested a new nuclear-capable underwater attack drone are very worrisome. According to the state news agency KCNA, the new North Korean drone cruised underwater at a depth of 80 to 150 meters for over 59 hours during the test and detonated a non-nuclear payload in waters of its east coast. A South Korean military official said they were analyzing North Korea's claims. A U.S. official speaking on the condition of anonymity said there was no indication of a nuclear test. While North Korea also said it had fired cruise missiles to practice carrying out tactical nuclear attacks, confirming earlier reports from the South Korean military. According to the KCNA, the cruise missiles were tipped with a test warhead simulating a nuclear warhead and flew 15,000 to 18,000 km. And thank you for today. Stay safe and stay healthy. We will see you soon. Bye.